Hi, welcome for our online training sessions, Human Capital Management. Whenever we are attending for interviews, especially in Global HR model, we'll be getting common questions regarding the positions. A lot of questions we'll get in, in positions option. The questions will be like, uh, what is the difference between job and position? Job is like uh, based on a particular work what employees are doing. Positions are used when the organization wants to maintain the headcount and budget as well as the approval process. When the organizations want to have detailed approval process, then we will be using this positions. Okay. So whenever the organization wants to maintain the jobs and positions, we'll go for maintain the job structure and position structure. The question comes here. Where do you configure the job structure and position structure? And what is the meaning of structure? Structure is nothing but group of attributes which we will be using to capture the position name and job name. To capture the position name and job name. Okay. So whenever we are working here, establish enterprise structure. This is the task name. Generally, this task, what we will do, we will use the uh, this task to configure enterprise structure. When the organizations wants to have the enterprise structure, we'll do it. But most of the times when we are working in the projects, we'll always configure enterprise structure manually. It means manually we'll go for define the legal employer, PSU, LDZ, primary ledger, business units, reference data sets, locations, this all. But when we want to go for define an enterprise, we'll do it from here. So after here we can see that there are number of enterprise structures, but we don't require uh, these many number of structures, enterprise structures. When we are working in the project, we'll find only one enterprise structure, which is loaded status. Okay. So once we join in the project, if the enterprise structure is already configured by someone else, then we have to understand first. Because when we are going to work, we must know how many countries this implementation is happening. How many legislative data groups are there? How many legal employers? How many PSUs are associated? Which ledger? And how about the business units? How about the reference data sets? What is the name of the enterprise? Enterprise level, what setups are done? Legal employer level, what setups are done? This is all we are supposed to understand. Okay. So here the question is, where do you configure the job structure and position structure? The moment when we create an enterprise structure here, there is a button configure jobs and positions. We are not creating the job or we are not creating the position over here. What we are trying to do is, we are trying to define the job structure and position structure over here. Structure is nothing but a group of attributes which we will be using to capture the name of the job or name of the position, name of the job or name of the position. Some client says that we would like to have a couple of attributes, means couple of fields to capture the position name. Uh, some client says that just one attribute is sufficient for us to capture the position name, just position name. Somebody says that I want position code and position name, two attributes. Somebody says that uh, I want position code, position name and position location also. So that uh, when the moment when we see the name of the position, we can easily understand oh, this position comes under which department or under which location. So we don't need to go for refer it again. So that purpose will have a structures. Generally two attributes are common, position code and position name, job code and job name. This is the page where we are going to configure the job structure and position structure. So the system is asking uh, which industry you are applying, manufacturing or financials, and how about the replacements, we are going ahead with the replacements. When we, when the employee re resign and left the organization, we will try to replace it. So here is the option where we are going to enable whether we want to implement the positions or not. Yes, I want to use positions to define specific worker roles in each organization and hierarchies for report. Okay, so this is also another important question. Is the jobs are mandatory or positions are mandatory for HCM implementation? Jobs are mandatory. Without jobs, we cannot go for implementing the human capital management. How about positions? Positions are optional. Okay, which scenario you will suggest to the client saying that 
yes, you have to go for the positions. In which scenario you will go for it? For example, client is running the business, having some thousands of employees with the detailed approval process. And they have some budget allocation for positions. And they also have some headcount restrictions for a particular positions. These all setups we wanted to implement for the position level, at position level, then obviously we'll go with the positions. We can't implement all this headcount controlling or budget enabling or detailed approvals. This we can't implement in job. In job, it is not possible. In job, we can go with approval, but we will not be able to go ahead with the detailed approvals. If at all, we would like to go with all these options, then we will go with the positions here. Click next button. Here, the system is asking at two levels. Enterprise level, you can go for set position attributes as well as the job attributes. It means uh, job structure and position structure at enterprise level. I would like to set the sequence Yes, we got an error message. Uh, this is because of the server issue. Maybe this is application issue. Let me change the server and start working on that. Here it will allow us to define the position structure at enterprise level as well as the job structure. I'm going to define only one attribute which is uh, character data type here text I'm going to use and then I'm going to have the enterprise level attribute here job name text we are going to have so what we have done here position structure as well as the job structure we are defined nothing but attributes at enterprise level so this whenever we define at enterprise level it's applicable for all the legal employers but client says that some of the business units, they wanted to have different uh, attributes. Some of the reference data sets, they wanted to have different job attributes. This is why we are getting a reference data set for job, business unit for position. It's very simple. We know that the enterprise structure, whenever we are working, positions can be assigned directly to the business units. But jobs cannot be assigned directly to the business unit first job should be assigned to the reference data set then reference data sets will be assigned to the business units finally jobs and positions whatever we are going to create that should be assigned for business unit only but jobs cannot be assigned directly to the bu through rds we can associate but positions will directly associate the reason is very simple positions are different from one bu to another bu so for every business unit, we need to interact with the client, ask the questions, what are the different positions you would like to have in this business unit? And then we have to go for define it. The same thing when it comes for the job, we, these jobs are almost all common for the business units. So we'll group these jobs and go for associate with business unit through reference data set, okay? So that's the answer we are supposed to give. I'm not going to define at BU level any position structure or reference data set level job structure. So that system will consider enterprise level and go for save and close. This is how we will go for define the position structure and job structure where it will be reflected. The moment when you try to create a position, the moment whenever we are creating the position here, position or job. So system will ask you to enter position name that time, it will ask us either one field or multiple fields. It will ask us either one field or multiple. See, position code and position name. Two fields are there. This is what we call it as a position structure. This is what we call it as a position structure. So what are the questions we have come across? The first question is, what is the difference between job and position? The second question is, where do you configure the job structure and position structure? The third one is, is the positions are mandatory for HCM implementation? Fourth one is, without job, can we create a position? No, not possible. How you will associate the positions directly with the business unit? We are going to assign these positions directly with the business units. Okay. So in which scenario you would like to have the positions? When the organization wants to have detailed approval and also the budget allocations, and headcount deductions, controlling on the headcount. When we wanted to have all this, then we use the positions here. 
Okay. So what are the mandatory objects before you start creating the position? You should have it. The first one is a business unit. Obviously, it's required. And the second one is a department. And the third one is a job. These three objects are mandatory before you go for create a position. How about the position hiring status? There will be three types of statuses, proposed, frozen, and approved. If the position is in approved status, then only you can hire an employee. If it is frozen, it means it's freezed, like you can't hire an employee. There are already employees that closed. Approved, proposed means that's for future purpose. In future, you are going to use this proposed. Okay, so that now I'm going to make it as approved and choose some department here. And the hiring status is this. How about the position type? This is a very important question. There are four different types we have. None, pooled, shared, single incumbent. Single incumbent means we can hire only one worker for this particular position. We cannot hire more than one worker. The moment when you hire one worker for single incumbent position, next time if you try to hire, it will show you the error message. But if at all we want to go with multiple, either we have to go with pooled and none. We can use either pooled or none. Pooled means there will be a control, 10 members, 20 members, 100 members like that. We can have some controlling even though if we say multiple workers but there should be some limit right that's what we call it as this pooled how about none none means uh, that there, there won't be any limit you can have more more employees over here and then shared means uh, same position will be shared by multiple employees like part time for example eight hours clerk position is there four hours one employee four hours another employee that time each employee is equal to 50 percent 0 0.5 FT, nothing but a full time equivalent. The moment when we choose the FT type, then system, if you say that two people are going to share and uh, FT will be 0 0.5, we are going to have it. Right. So, this is how we will go for uh, define. For example, if at all we have specified single incumbent, let's say we mentioned single incumbent, obviously full-time employee and we can have only one headcount and we hired an employee is working and uh, obviously when you try to another hire another employee you cannot go for hire because system will show the error message already one employee is occupied this particular position we can't go for more than one employee because of this option single income rate. now this employee whoever is holding this position has left the organization. He has resigned. He has resigned the organization. Let's say he has resigned today. Last date will be May 26th. May 26th will be the last date. Okay. So when May 26th is last date, till that time, employee will be on hold. Meanwhile, another employee is going to join in this place. For the same position, we have already recruited another employee. So he's going to join in the company. But system is not going to allow us to hire unless and until you go for 26th May. After 26th May, it's fine. No problem. You can hire employee. By that time, we have terminated an employee. Last date is closed. And then you can take the new employee. But meanwhile, employee is going to join. In between, employee is going to join. How you can perform that? This is another important question. There is option here. Overlap allowed or not? Current and new incumbent can occupy the position at the same time. You have to say yes. This is another question. Overlap allowed. Overlap allowed. We have to say yes. Then system will allow us to take another employee during this particular period also. This is how we can go for uh, configure the positions. Uh, one of the important questions. There is another concept called position synchronization. In my YouTube channel, I have already specified. You can search synchronizing the position attributes at the time of hiring an employee that we will do the setup at enterprise level as well as at the job level we are going to have it okay this is about the positions and different questions which we can expect in the interview point of view about the positions okay thank you subscribe for my rtl online training channel to get the latest updates for the cloud regarding the 
real time training and placement and if you are interested to do the freelance work if anybody is already working please contact our rtl online training so you can go to youtube channel search for rtl online training you will get it here communicate with us here okay thank you